Chapter 7, Lesson 9, Essential Questions. How do you multiply mixed numbers? Unlock the problem. One third of a one and a quarter acre park has been set aside as a dog park. Find the number of acres that are used as a dog park. Underline what you're being asked to find, circle the important numbers, and also answer this gray box, green box. You should have underlined find the number of acres that are used as the dog park, circled one and one quarter, one and one fourth, and then also one third. This is written as a word, but it's still a number. I also underlined the word of because when we're working with fractions, of um, means multiplication. So that's how we know we have to multiply for our answer. Um, next is the area of the park less than or greater than the area of the quarter, one and a quarter acre park. Well, we're finding a part of the acre park. So the dog park is going to be smaller, it's going to be less than. Plus we're finding a fraction of the whole number, the mixed number. So one way to do this is to use a model. This way is a review. So the first step is to shade the model to represent the whole park. And the whole park was one and one fourth acres. So go ahead and shade one and one fourth acres, or one and one fourth of this rectangle and this rectangle. Right there, I shaded in one whole rectangle and then one of the four. And now we're going to double shade the model that represents the part of the dog park. And remember the dog park is one third of the park. So now we're going to draw horizontal lines to show three parts. Okay, so now that we have those, how many parts does each rectangle show? How many little parts in there? Well, this is a four by three, so there are 12 inside that whole rectangle. And what, oh, now we need to shade in one third, okay? So because one third is this way, we need to shade in one of the three that we did. So there's one in that part. So now what fraction of each rectangle is shaded twice? Well, in the first one, we have, there's four of the 12. So we're going to write four twelfths. In the second one, there's only one that's double shaded. So one twelfth. So what fraction represents all the parts that are shaded twice? We would have four twelfths plus one twelfth. Since the denominators are the same, we just add them together and we get five twelfths of an acre has been set aside for the dog park. Now we're going to do this another way using an algorithm and we're going to rename the mixed number as a fraction. We're going to make it become an improper fraction. So step one is to write the mixed number as a fraction greater than one, which just means it's an improper fraction where the top number, the numerator, is larger than the denominator. So we have one third and one third rewritten times one and one fourth. We do our circle, we go four times one, so denominator times new, whole number plus numerator. 4 times 1 is 4, plus 1 equals 5. And then we can just multiply straight across. We bring our 5 down. We have 1 times 5 equals 5, and 3 times 4 equals 12. So either strategy works, and you end up with the answer of 5 twelfths. Looking at example 1, rename the whole number. This is another way um, when working with whole numbers and mixed numbers. Multiply 12 times 2 and 1 sixth. Write the product in the simplest form. That means to reduce. Step 1. Determine how the product will compare to the greater factor. So 12 times 2 and 1 sixth will be what compared to 12? Well, we're gonna, 12, we know 12 times 2 would be 24, which is greater than 12. So even if with the fraction, our answer should end up being greater than 12. Now step two, write the whole number and mixed numbers as fractions. 
So we know for 12 to make that become a fraction, all we do is put it over 1 because 12 divided by 1 is still 12. Then our mixed number as an improper fraction, 6 times 2 is 12 plus 1 is 13. And now we're going to multiply those. We would go 12 times 13 over 1 times 6. Finish out this part. You should have got 156 over 6, 12 times 13. Um, right here I did 144 because I knew that was 12 times 12 and then I added one more 12 so that makes 13 12s. So 156 time, uh, 1 times 6 equals 6. So now we need to simplify. Remember fractions are another way to write division problems so we could solve that just by doing a division problem of 156 divided by 6. Press pause and do that. So right here I did my little division problem. I did 156 divided by 6 and I found that it goes in there 26 times with no remainders. So 12 times 2 and 1 6 is 26. And it makes sense because we need 2 more than 12 plus a little bit more. So 26 is just a little bit more than 12 times 2. Now we're going to try another strategy of how to do, do multiplication with fractions. Use the distributive property. So we're going to multiply 16 times 4 and 1 8 and then write the product in the simplest form. So the first thing, we rewrite the expression by using the distributive property. So in this one, you are not renaming into improper fractions. You're splitting your mixed number up and working on it in parts. So um, we have 16 times 4 and 1 8th. 16 times, and we can split this as to be 4 plus 1 8th. Okay, and then we're going to just kind of break it apart again because it doesn't matter the order in which you multiply. So we have 16 times 4 plus 16 times 1 8th. 1 8th. So the first thing we're going to look at is we're going to go 16 times 4. Fill that in right here. I know I can go 6 times 4 is 24. 4 times 1 is 4 plus 2 is 6. So 64. And then 2. How did we get that 2? Well, anytime we multiply a whole number times a fraction, we can put that over a fraction. So this essentially is going to be the same as 16 times 1, which is 16. 1 times 8, which is 8. And then 16 divided by 8, well, there's two groups of 8 and 16, so that is where the 2 comes from. And now we just add that all up. 64 plus 2 equals 66. So 16 times 4 and 1 eighth equals 66. So explain, why might you choose to use the distributive property to solve example 2? Why do you think this may have been a better strategy than renaming your mixed number? Well, for me, if I go 8 times 4 is 32 plus 1, I would have ended up doing 16 times um, 33, and that's a lot, and a really big number. So, And this broke it down into something manageable. So you should write a sentence that reflects why you think you you should have broken this up in distributive property. So I just wrote, it keeps it in manageable numbers, not 16 over 1 times 33 over 8. The next one is when you multiply two factors greater than 1, is the product less than, between, or greater than the two factors? So we can look right here again. 16 is greater than 1, 4 and 1 eighth is greater than 1, and our answer is greater than both. This is because we're combining two groups. And maybe not necessarily combining, but I, the product will be greater because we're finding multiple groups. So in this case, we're finding 
16 groups of 4 and 1 8. Press pause while you work on the share and show problems. Um, on 7 and 8, where it talks about the distributive property, I have set it up for you. So remember, parentheses first, then um, you'll just add the two answers that you get together to find your whole. And all I did was break up our mixed numbers into smaller um, multiplication problems. Number three, renaming it one time or er, eight times one equals eight plus one equals nine over eight times three times two is six plus one is seven over three sixty three over twenty four. Then if I divide them each by three, twenty one over eight, and then there are two eights, that's 16, with five left over. So two and five eights is our final answer for that one. Number four, you would keep your three fourths times, and then six times six is 36, plus five is going to be 41, and over six. So 41 times three, three times one is three, three times four is 12, 123 over 24 and then 123 divided by 24 well 24 times 5 is 120 so there's 5 24s and then so 120 is 24 times 5 so that would leave me 3 left over of 24 and so again, it'd be 5 and 1 eighth. So 5 and 1 eighth is the final for number 4. On number 7, I circled these so that I did my whole name, number and numerator. And then that's 16 halves. 16 divided by 2 is 8. So that's where I got my final answer there. And on number 8, um, again, I got 60 over 5 which 60 divided by 5 equals 12. So I have 1 times 15 is 15, plus 12, which equals 27. Double check to make sure you didn't make a small computation error, and then you may work on your other tasks.